All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Tuesday Night Special. And now it's time for us to talk about what happened during the second half of Monday Night Raw from the Thunderdome in Orlando, Florida. And the next match to take place on Monday Night Raw would see the Riot Squad with Bianca Belair teaming up to fight against Selena Vega and the Iconics. And during this match, things looked like it was going well for Zelina Vega and the Iconics with them not only doing their Iconic kicks and Zelina Vega actually trying to take out Ruby Riot with an axe kick and a sliding tiger knee to the face for near fall. But the second Bianca Belair made her way into the match, that's when the whole match changed. Because Bianca Belair, who still remembered that Zelina Vega was the one who poisoned Montez Ford, she would lay a whooping on her. And to the point where she was able to counter a crucifix head scissors with a cartwheel and then would be able to pull off a glam slam, a standing version without the sit out version that Beth Phoenix would do, and would then proceed to get help from the Riot Squad in the form of double insecurities to take out the Iconics, leaving her in the ring alone with Selena Vega to pull off the KOD for the WIN for the team of Bianca Belair and the Riot Squad via pinfall. And yes, Maestro, I do know that the KOD stands for Kiss of Death, and that's exactly what she got when she decided to mess with Montez Ford. And I got a feeling this is not over by a long shot. And the next thing to take place on Monday Night Raw would see none other than Apollo Crews going against Bobby Lashley in an arm wrestling contest. Now, the only reason this is taking place, folks, is because at Payback this Sunday, we would see Bobby Lashley going up against Apollo Crews for the United States Championship, so to see who's better before that match, an arm wrestling contest that was led by none other than the world's strongest man himself, Mark Henry. Now, prior to this match taking place, folks, you would see Ricochet and, of course, Cedric Alexander backstage talking it out and even getting in an arm wrestling competition with themselves, only for MVP to once again try to stir the pot backstage about his tag team partner, who is the one and only, and would then tell him you should join the Hurt Business or just stay in catering for Cedric Alexander to once again say no. So apparently MVP still trying to recruit Cedric Alexander and the answer still and I got a feeling will always be no. Cut it out man, cut it out. But that would be the least of his worries because during this arm wrestling competition that Bobby Lashley didn't take seriously because he came to the ring in a suit would end up paying for it after he tried to put his foot underneath the makeshift arm wrestling table for Apollo Crews to step on his foot, win the arm wrestling competition, and avoid a beatdown from the Hurt Business to celebrate up the ramp for MVP and the crew to make their way to Raw Underground. And the second they got to Raw Underground, Bobby Lashley would hit the ring and try to beat up anything that was standing for Raw Underground for this week. And would even get a challenge from none other than Dolph Ziggler who would put up one hell of a fight until Bobby Lashley would say enough is enough while Dolph Ziggler had him hooked from behind with a sleeper hold and would just throw Dolph Ziggler into the wall like if he was nothing. And then MVP, to make matters worse, would just throw random people into the ring for the Hurt Business to get one over on the people of Raw Underground to get over their hurt feelings after their major losses for this week. Once again, proving that the Hurt Business, every time they lose, they go somewhere else to bounce back. And speaking of people who are hurt, folks, the next take place on Monday Night Raw would be a match between none other than Randy Orton going one-on-one -on -one against the limitless one, Keith Lee. Now, prior to this match taking place, Randy Orton would make his way down to the ring and explain his actions from earlier tonight, kicking the skull of 
Drew McIntyre not once but twice by him saying that the only reason he did it because he promised that he was going to do it at SummerSlam and alongside with that a pity title match from Drew McIntyre insulting him as a wrestler was enough for him to try to kick his head off and then would say that he was going to go on to do more dangerous things, but before he could call out Drew McIntyre, the next thing you would see would be the limitless one Keith Lee coming out in response and challenging none other than Randy Orton to a match that would happen right now. And Randy Orton would find out firsthand why in the world Keith Lee is limitless and not to mention what Samoa Joe would call him, a Sherman tank with a rocket engine by not only countering several different moves he would do, but would also do a belly to belly suplex release style and still stand up on his feet afterwards. Insanity. And even catching the fist of Randy Orton, crushing it in his hands like beer cans, only for Randy Orton to somehow get an advantage during this match by doing a draping DDT and was just about to go for the RKO until Drew McIntyre would come out and beat the daylights out of him all the way until the Viper would have to slither backstage once again for Drew McIntyre to get interviewed by Charlie Caruso about the fact of how he's doing after getting kicked in the head twice, which the answer is obvious, not good, but his night was about to get a little bit worse because Randy Orton would slither right behind him, punch him in the back of the head, and then kick him in the skull for the third time tonight and be shipped off in the ambulance with what doctors were mumbling back and forth according to Charlie Caruso is a possible skull fracture to Drew McIntyre thanks to Randy Orton. And Drew McIntyre would get a little bit of revenge in the form of Keith Lee by him saying he knows Drew McIntyre, he knows he's a tough guy, but I got a feeling he's going to be okay, but the same cannot be said for Randy Orton. And the match would be made official, folks, for this Sunday. It'll be Randy Orton going one-on-one against Keith Lee in Keith Lee's first main card pay-per-view match that was a week after SummerSlam. Right. And besides all of that, folks, the next thing that would take place on Monday Night Raw, and I got a feeling I already got it out of order, you would see none other than Natalia and Lana in the center of the ring to retire Mickey James and put her in the Hall of Fame by showing her classic moments, only for Natalia to say, I worked all day and night on this, and would show nothing on the screen and laugh at the fact that she said that she had nothing memorable in her career, apparently not paying attention to the match she had against Trish Stratus and the rivalries that she had over the years for several different championships when she was a part of the company prior to this, only for Mickey James to make a beeline to the ring and decide to push Natalia on her duff and then proceed to hit None other than Lana with another long kiss goodnight kick right to the head, taking out Lana once again for them to both look like they had that I want a sweepstakes look on their face, or more or less the I cannot believe it's not butter look that I keep mentioning on a weekly basis with certain people when they have that shock look when something bad happens in their life. And the next thing to take place on Monday Night Raw would see Sasha Banks going one-on-one -on -one against Asuka for the Raw Women's Championship inside of a Lumberjack match. Now, I could have remembered several months ago that they said that the rematch clause would be abolished and people would have to earn their title shots, but apparently somewhere along the line they forgot about that and Sasha Banks magically got a rematch for the Raw Women's Championship, but would it work in her favor? Well, sort of. Because after Asuka would unleash a blitzkrieg attack on Sasha Banks and once things got taken to the outside of the ring where Sasha Banks would accidentally take out the Lumberjacks and the Lumberjacks would do nothing to her, next thing you know when Asuka tried to go after Bailey, who constantly interfered in this match 
and would send lumberjack after lumberjack after her to try to prevent her from getting her hands on Bailey. You would see Sasha Banks coming back into this match by pushing Asuka into the stairs and still trying to get a win. But unfortunately, when things wouldn't go their way and Asuka was still on a tirade, next thing you know, Bailey would take things to the next level and would try to slide a chair inside the ring, only for the queen of spades to grab her by the legs, kick her in the face, and for once again, in under 24 hours, for the boss to tap out to the Empress of Tomorrow for Asuka to retain her Raw Women's Championship via submission. And after the match was over, Asuka would just celebrate with the belt. Meanwhile, while Sasha Banks would still just be in misery talking to Bailey about why in the world she didn't help her during the match. And then she would point to Shayna Baszler who would not be there at the time while she was pointing. So yeah, they got a lot of issues to work out if they're going to beat Team Hodgepodge at Payback this Sunday. And with that folks, we head directly into the main event of the evening, but not before we talk about other crazy things that would happen in Raw Underground in the form of Ivar and Erica the Viking Raiders trying to go against Shelton Benjamin and Bobby Lashley in the ring after an all out riot would take place in the Raw Underground thanks to the Hurt Business. And the Hurt Business would be booming at that point by not only taking out Ivar with a Kimura thanks to Bobby Lashley, but also throwing them all out of the ring like if they were nothing. Right. So whenever they lose, they just go to Raw Underground and just mess up the whole program, which Shane McMahon says, huh, there's no rules. So it's okay. And the main event for the evening, which would see Ray and Dominic Mysterio going up against Seth Metal, Seth Rollins, and Murphy in a tag team match. I thought there was some form of stipulation added to it, that's why we paused there for a second, but no, just a straight up tag team match. That would see Dominic Mysterio working like a well-oiled machine by pulling off some very impressive moves like his crucifix arm drag, and not only that, but pulling off a nasty satellite DDT to Murphy for near fall, and would even team up with his father in the later goings of this match to pull off a double 619 and just when he was about to go for the win and the pin on Murphy, next thing you know, the lights would start to flicker, meaning Project Mayhem was in the house, aka Retribution, which would give Seth Rollins enough of an opportunity to just push Dominic off the top rope and run out of the ring before Retribution would hit the scene, leaving Rey Mysterio and Dominic to get the crap beat out of them by six members of Retribution that somehow made it past the heightened security that they added for the night for Rey Mysterio to get his head tossed right directly into the turnbuckle pad or the steel beam holding the turnbuckle right to the post itself and for Dominic to get thrown into the wall and dispatched the same way like Rey Mysterio for Raw to end in chaos once again thanks to Retribution for nobody to do a thing about it like they would have done on SmackDown because at least the SmackDown locker room poured out and tried to help them out. But in this case, I guess they were too busy with Raw Underground or Drew McIntyre being taken away in an ambulance to do anything to take care of Retribution. And the one person who calls himself a locker room leader just left two people in the ring high and dry. Good job, Seth Rollins. Good job. And with that said, folks, we might as well head back into the music and grab a glass of water. And when we return, we'll be back with more of the Tuesday night special right after this. So don't fall asleep just yet, folks, and stay tuned. <laughs> 